Hello again. Okay, let's solve this problem for internal forces again. We have to determine the internal normal force, shear force, and moment at the points E and F. And the point F is located just to the left of the 15 kilonewton force and couple moment. That means that the section is acting right there, a little bit to the left. And also that means that if we use this side, we don't include force and moment. And if we use this side, we, in, we have to include force and moment. Now, if the problem, remember, doesn't say located just to the left, but they say the point F and that's it, then we have to make a cut at point F. And that's when you have to do in one side, you include it one time, and then you do it again and not including it, or vice versa. You don't include it the first time, and then you include it for the force, and for the moment, you consider included and not included. But in this problem, it's just easy. We just have to do one section and that's it. But there is another problem associated with this example. And the other problem is the following. Look at this. This is a pin. So if we have a pin, we have one reaction and one reaction. This is a roller. That means that we have another vertical reaction here, BY. And this is another roller, which we have another vertical reaction here, DY. Now, when we start working with this problem, then you're gonna see that we have four unknowns and three equations, but that's not statically indeterminate. Even if we have four unknowns and three equations, it's not statically indeterminate because if you apply the method for determining indeterminacy or indeterminacy, we have two plus one, three, plus two in this hinge, five, plus one in this roller, six, are equal to 6 and n which is the number of elements is 1 2 n equal 2 and r equal 3 n meaning this is a statically determinant so how come we can do that because we have a hinge and if we have the hinge remember we are studying sections in the previous problem in the previous example we make a section here and when we make a section there we always have an axial shear a moment internal forces but if I have a hinge and I make a section in that hinge, there's no moment in that hinge because it's a hinge. So that provides me with a little piece of information. Well, I wouldn't even say little, with a huge piece of information that is going to allow me to solve the problem. So if I make a section at C, the, that beam will look something like that. I have the beam with the distributed load on top of that. This is my reaction at B, and these are my reactions at A, and this is the point C. And at the point C, remember, if I'm studying one side or the other side, it doesn't matter, but you can do it like that if you want to. This is going to be my shear, and this is going to be my axial at C, C Y, uh, A Y, A X, uh, A X, A C, or C X, you can call it C X. And at the other side, at the same time, at the other side of the element, what I have is this 15. Now, notice that the 15 force has to be, uh, and, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is just the, at the other side, we have and if I study the other side now, which is this side, then I will have the point C is here and the reactions has to go uh, this side is going to be like that this is cy this is my cx in the other direction i'm sorry this direction opposite to this one and i have the 15 kilonewton force here and i have the moment also at this point of 25 kilonewton meter and i have my reaction at d this distance Distances are 2 meters and 2 meters. Now look what happened here. Moment, there's no moment here because it's a hinge. So how many reactions? 1, 2, 3. If the whole beam is in equilibrium, every portion is in equilibrium. So what if I just study this side now? And I do summation of moments at C. And I'm going to put this just to say that I'm using the right side of the beam after the cut. Equals 0. 
So if you do that, then you have, with respect to C, you have 15 times 2 negative, negative 25 plus 4 dy equals 0, and dy is equal to 13.75 kilonewton. Now we have dy. For this particular problem, I have no interest whatsoever calculating CY or CX because the problem is not asking me to do that. It's just at F and at E, but I definitely need to calculate AX and AY. AX is easy to see because if I do summation of forces in X now in the whole beam, the complete beam, then AX is going to be zero. And if take the whole beam also, the complete beam, complete beam, and I do summation of moments, let's say at A, I don't know, you can do it A, B, C, whatever, but if I do summation of moment at A equals zero, here, then you have the force coming from the triangle, the rectangle is three times this high, this distance, this base, which is 4.5 plus 1.56, so you have the force coming from there, the force is 3 times 6, that's the force, times the distance. What is the distance of that force? It's half of the base, and the base is 3. So the distance from here to here is also 3 times 3, and that is negative. Now I have Vy going up, Vy positive with respect to this point times 4.5, because the distance from here to here is 4.5. And then we come to this side, and then we have this 15, which is going to be also negative from this point. Negative 15 times the distance from here to here is 6 plus 2, 8. I have this moment acting there, which is acting negative, negative 25, negative 25. And then I have the force dy, which is plus, remember it's acting in this direction, plus, plus what? 6, 8, 10, 10 dy equals 0. And from here you can get that dy is equal to dy now. I'm sorry. dy I know from here. This is 13, okay, dy is equal to 13.75 that I calculated before, and from here you can get the value for by, and by is going to be equal to 13.6 periodic newton. Now the only missing part is your summation of forces in y, the whole beam again, equals 0, and then I'm going to have these force here, a y, minus the vertical force coming from this triangle, which is 3 times 6, 18, plus b y, which is 13.6, minus 15, plus d y, 13.75 equals 0, equals 0, and from there, then I can solve for a, a y, and a y is going to be equal to 5.583 Newton, there you go, now we have our reactions, once we have the reactions, we can continue our problem as uh, just the regular problem for calculating the section. So let's do that. Let's continue the problem for calculating the sections. Now, if I continue this problem here, what we have is the following. We need to calculate the reactions at the point E, the reaction, the internal forces at the point E, and the internal forces at the point F. So let's start with the point E. 
when we start at the point E or at E, then what we have here is that we have to make a section at the point E. When we do that section at the point E, you have the load on top of that, which is three kilonewton meter. We have our reaction AY, and our reaction AY was 5.583. The distance from here to here is 2.25. And the only thing that we have to incorporate there is the internal forces because we are using this side of the internal of the beam, this part. The positive direction is going to be this, so it's going to be VE. The actual, I'm not putting it because I know it's zero because there's no actual force here also. And the moment, moment at E. And after that, the only thing that we have to do is summation of forces in Y equals zero which is going to give me 5.583 minus the force coming from here, which is 3 times 2.25. Remember, we have a force here, which is the area of this. 3 times 2.25 minus VE equals 0, and VE is going to be equal to negative 1.16 Newton. That's our value for VE. And if I do summation of moments at E equals zero, remember this is the point E, then you have negative 5.583 times the distance from here to here, 2.25, plus this load, and this load is three times 2.25, multiply by the distance from here to here. What is the distance from here to here? Half of the base. And the base is 2.25. So half of the base is 2.25, half of that. Don't get confused now when you see this and say, oh, this is the area of a triangle. No, there's no area of triangle. Three times 2.25 is the load, and 2.25 divided by two is the distance from here. 2.25 divided by two because it's half of the distance. And once you have that plus the moment here, me, equals zero, and then you can calculate your moment E, and the moment E is going to be equal to 4.97 kilonewton meter. There you go. First part of the problem, check, done. Now the second part of the problem. The second part of the problem is the same, but at the point F which is here. So if I make a section here, I have two choices. Either I use this side, because remember, the problem is telling me that the force F, the point F is located to the left of the force and the moment, so the force and moment wouldn't be included if I use this side. But I don't know, I see this side like force, force, distance, distance, like more complicated. Or you can use this side and use this part of the of the element, but in this part of the element, you have to include force and moment. It's up to you. I'm gonna use this side, and I want you to check it and verify it using the other side. So if I use the side of the beam, what you get is, this is your beam. You have the force of 15. You have the moment, which is 25. You have the reaction at D. The reaction at D is 13.75. The distance from here to here is 2. And because I'm using this side, remember the convention of the internal forces has to be like that. BF and MF. This is the positive convention for that. Once we have that, the problem is again the same thing. Summation of forces in Y equals 0. So I have BF minus 15 plus 13.75 equals zero, and Vf is gonna be equal to 1.25 kilonewton. And if I do summation of moments at F, remember this is the point F here, equals zero, 
what we get is 13.75 times 2 positive 13.75 times 2 negative 25 and this 15 is not producing because I'm at the same point but this mf it produces also which is going to be negative mf equals 0 once we have that we can solve for mf and mf is equal to 2.5 kN. meter there you go we completed our problem important thing about this problem more than the uh, calculation of the internal forces is the use of the hinge in order to break up a problem into parts and being able to calculate the problem that looks like statically indeterminate but is not statically indeterminate please try to go and practice more problems with hinges I'm gonna do more problems with hinges when we go to the shear uh, moment diagrams but not now okay that's all for this problem guys thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video lecture have a good day